So in this video I'll talk about theoretical sampling and some similarities and differences between theoretical sampling and purposeful sampling. And also I will recommend some really good resources for learning about qualitative research that I recently added to my website. So the reason I haven't been very active recently is because I have been working on adding exclusive content for registered members on my website. I'll put the link in the description. So basically uh, the registration is free so the membership on my website is free so you can register today and uh, what you get access to are uh, two main things at the moment although I'll be adding more and more content. So the first thing is uh, researchers, a qualitative researchers toolkit, which is like an ebook about qualitative research. And in that ebook, uh, I link to uh, articles and blogs and videos that I have posted in the past on YouTube, on my blog, on Facebook. Uh, so basically, it's uh, all organized in one place, uh, so you can actually find things in that book, which I think is very convenient. And the second thing that I added, uh, the second type of exclusive content for uh, registered members on my website is a, a completely free uh, self-study online video course on how to develop a good research idea. This course used to be a paid one and I decided to uh, make it available for free. So in that course I, as the name suggests, uh, talk about developing a research idea, a research topic. Uh, I discuss uh, different utilizing different skills, so reading and writing and, and even thinking. Uh, so basically what to do to develop this really good and strong research idea, where to look for uh, sources, what to read, what kind of academic sources to read and uh, how to organize that reading and when to start writing uh, in order to, uh, in the long run, to work towards developing this really good research idea. So now on to theoretical sampling. I have been uh, recently asked by one of you uh, about what theoretical sampling is and how it differs from purposeful sampling. So I will explain uh, both in simple terms or so I hope. So basically uh, theoretical sampling is a very uh, simple thing really. So what happens is after you have uh, conducted your sampling, so you have uh, recruited your participants uh, for your study in any way, so it could be a convenient sampling or a purposeful uh, sampling, uh, after you have already recruited your participants, you have collected the data from your participants, as you're analyzing that data, you may be developing some kind of an explanation or a working hypothesis or a theory, hence the name theoretical sampling. So as you are developing this theory, you may feel that because initially when you recruited the first uh, batch of uh, participants, you didn't know obviously about that theory, so you didn't focus, you may have not focused on certain uh, characteristics of the participants. But as you are developing that theory, uh, you begin to understand who, uh, what kind of a person can contribute to your understanding of that theory or to exploring that theory further or maybe confirming or rejecting that idea, that theory or that explanation. So you decide to recruit more participants. So this is very important. So uh, theoretical sampling happens uh, during the study. So not prior to the study, not prior to data collection, but it happens after data collection, after you have analyzed the data and from that analysis that theory that I mentioned uh, starts to develop. So to give you an example, let's imagine that we are doing a study of nurses' experiences or maybe uh, nurses who are in intense care. Uh, some kind of experience or a study of uh, stress or workplace stress that these nurses experience. And as I am analyzing the data, I begin to realize that uh, it seems like uh, the older nurses or maybe the nurses with more uh, work experience uh, do not experience as much stress as, uh, as the new nurses, so the newly, the freshly uh, qualified new nurses. But I also realized that I only have uh, two or one of these older nurses in my, in my current sample because when I was uh, initially uh, recruiting my participants, I didn't know about this, uh, you know, this potential theory. I, I didn't think that there could be, uh, that age could be a factor. 
So what do I do? So I decide that I need to recruit more participants and this time I need more nurses who are older or who have more work experience. Uh, so this sampling, this theoretical sampling is based, strongly based on my data analysis and is strongly based on uh, the theory uh, that emerges from the data analysis. And this exact thing happened when I was doing my study of Polish migrants' identity. Uh, so basically I recruited uh, participants between who are between 18 and 35 years old because this was an average age of a Polish migrant in Scotland at, at that time. Uh, but later on, as I was uh, developing this theory of identity, I realized that the older participants, so the 35 and 33-year-old uh, uh, participants, uh, they had different experiences, so basically I, I thought that they don't really care about other people's perceptions that much. But I didn't have any old, older participants, I only had a maximum, the maximum age was 35 years old. So I decided at that stage to recruit more participants and I recruited participants who are 40 and 45 and, and I think about 50 years old in order to develop, to explore and test that theory, that idea that uh, uh, the older you get, the less you seem to care about other people's perceptions. So in terms of similarities and differences between theoretical sampling and uh, purposeful sampling, because uh, the person who asked me about theoretical sampling was uh, confused uh, about the difference between the two, because as she said, uh, purposeful sampling is also about recruiting participants who you believe know a lot about your topic, which is true and both of these uh, sampling techniques are about recruiting participants who you believe uh, know something about your topic or can contribute uh, to your topic, can contribute to answering your research questions. And in fact, theoretical sampling is also purposeful sampling. It's the same, the same thing but happens at a different stage. So that's the main difference. Purposeful sampling happens when you uh, uh, prior to your data collection when you want to gain access to uh, participants who, as I said, know something about your topic or you believe they know something about your topic. And theoretical sampling, as I just explained, is pretty much the same thing. So, again, you are uh, recruiting people who you suspect may know something about your topic, may help you answer your research questions, except that you recruit them later on. So theoretical sampling is based on your data analysis and it happens during the study, not uh, prior to the study. So I hope that I explained theoretical sampling quite well. If you still have any questions, uh, feel free to ask me these questions, to pause the questions uh, in the comments below the video. Also, if you enjoy this content, please like the video. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and press that bell button, which basically means that you will receive notifications whenever I add new content. And also don't forget to explore my website, I'll put the link in the description. Don't forget to register for free and enroll in my self-study course on how to develop a good research topic.